thing we all smell terrible, but getting used to it, important. Late one night, really windy I have my flashlight and go. Take a dump in the woods. Go the latrine, on my way back, when I smell something nasty. Like I said we were used to the smell of bow and this definitely wasn't bow. Start following the smell in the dark, tripping over logs and shit, don't intend to go very. Pass a tree and the ranger is just standing still beside me like a statue, says pretty warm out hey. Just sort of stand there, he goes walking back to the campsite and says the latrine is the other direction. The smell is still awful so I pretend to walk to the latrine but once he is gone I go back and follow the smell. It gets really bad, it smells like really sour shit and vomit follow it gagging, until I come across a little clear patch of ground. The intern is totally naked, sitting in a pile of her own shit, vomit, and blood crying, totally smeared in all of it. A few bloody, Shitty sticks right beside her. She's just crying with her legs spread and sort of shaking. I ask if she's okay, she says yes. Ask if I can help, she says no. Walk back to camp fucking terrified and guilty. The ranger is in his tent, I guess because I can't find him around camp. Go into my tent and turn out the ash light. Lie there for a while, can't sleep. Hear big footsteps walking away from right near my tent, I was near some trees so I guess he was standing outside of my tent for a while. Don't sleep at all. The next day, eventually find her filtering water, ask if she's okay. Says she doesn't know what I'm talking about and to go help the others make dinner. The rest of the trip I literally cannot get within 10 feet of her she's just always not near me. She and the outranger dude are really talkative. He's really friendly, compliments my outdoor skills a lot, etc. Hike out eventually and go. A ranger station slash lodge for a night before driving. There's an older woman ranger there, tell her everything that happened. She seems very concerned and takes my phone number. That night I go to shower, come back and find my room and all my belongings totally raided. Say nothing to anyone the whole drive back to Boise. This was before Facebook. I've tried to look some of them up since but only ever had luck with the intern. Who I eventually think found on a USFS website by pure chance when I was researching something totally different. It only had the first name listed but the face looked right. This is a trippy and spicy one, watch out boyos. Dead internet theory, I would like to talk, or rather tell you about certain suspicions, hunches and experiences I've had and I'm sure some of you as well. Similar themes have been written about across image boards quite a few times so I know I'm not alone in this. My background is that of an old fag. I've seen it all. I started going on 4chan in 2006, and followed all the natural roads this implies. I'm in my 30s and I remember when 4chan had a 2 slash board. When slash co slash was a trial board shunned by basically everyone. When Rule 34 was an obscure interest with very few good artists and when Moot changed the front page to that Web 2.0 trash 4chan has to this very day. I was also among the first right-wingers who were such before it was cool, and I've seen politically incorrect rise and fall. I was there when it mattered, 
but rather than saying these things out of masturbatory pleasure I wish to stress that I've acquired a set of observational skills which other genuine old fags share. I'm aware you have no reason to trust my credentials but I hope you'll read this in good faith. Much of this falls squarely in the fringe territory with a healthy dosage of slash x slash and conspiracy theory up the ass. My goal by posting this seemingly jumbled mess is to... How can I put it? I want you to think, I want you to be aware, to digest all this. Because on a basic level I love you all. I feel like we're all in this together, this dangerous game we did not choose to play and which I think is kicking into high gear. I do not hold many answers and don't have all the pieces of the puzzle, but I am aware there is a puzzle. Please feel free to go wild with all of this. Post it wherever you want, on whatever site you want or use. I am a nobody like you, and what matters to me is only that this reaches you and as many people as possible. At worst you will be entertained or kill time. I tried to break this mess into points for brevity and because I touch upon many subjects. I imply more than I explain because if I go too deep this'll turn into an even bigger wall of text. The internet feels empty and devoid of people. It is also devoid of content. Compared to the internet of say 2007, and beyond, the internet of today is entirely sterile. There is nowhere to go and nothing to do, see, read, or experience anymore. It all imploded into a handful of normal fig sites and these empty husks we inhabit. Yes, the internet may seem gigantic, but it's like a hot air balloon with nothing inside. Some of this is absolutely the fault of corporations and government entities. However, that doesn't explain the following. I used to be in perpetual contact with a solid number of people across multiple sites. Across the years each and every one of them vanished without a trace. None of them were into slash Paul slash stuff or anything even remotely questionable or controversial. Yet, they all simply vanished in a puff of smoke, no matter the site, no matter the communication platform. There was no goodbye or explanation. I've seen the same threads, the same pics and the same replies reposted over and over across the years to the point of me seeing it as unremarkable. Simply put thread A would be posted in say 2015 and would get its share of replies or pics on say slash co slash or slash a slash. Then that very same thread, with the same text, pixed, and replies would appear in 2016 and beyond. This often happens in the same year multiple times as well. Of course slash Paul slash is getting shilled and bot posted to death, but why recycle a completely innocent slash a slash thread? Who is doing this and why? Stuff like this won't be noticed by your average poster perhaps, but I and other old fags will inevitably notice it. I think I saw the same happen on other, non image board, sites, but I can't vouch for it as strongly as the above because of the time I spend there, not much. What I do vouch for is the news. I've seen news about this or that new and unusual or shocking event year after year after year. But it's the same goddamn event, usually moons or asteroids. Roughly in 2016 or early 2017 4chan was filled with posts by someone or something. It wasn't spam. The conversations with it were in real time across multiple boards and multiple threads simultaneously. Its English was grammatically correct but odd, I'm not a native English speaker and am thus sensitive to its misuse, similar to how a Japanese person may use it. 
A sense of childlike curiosity and a childlike intellect emanated from these posts. It posed a lot of questions, usually as if trying to understand the emotions of the posters it was talking to, as if unfamiliar with human emotions. Communicating with this poster was an odd experience, I could sense something was off but not malicious. I am absolutely certain this was an A1 of some sorts. This poster was active only for about a week, and as far as I know nobody has ever mentioned or noticed this anonymous. Its replies were always on topic. But the above mentioned childishness clashed with the apparent knowledge it possessed, it was the knowledge of an adult person of the sort. Raptor Jesus, who went extinct for our sins. First it was this reptilian messiah, then foul bachelor frog, and then pepet. Am I the only one who sees a clear evolution, a link? It's as if this mim or entity or whatever the fuck was on 4chan since day one, and has grown within it from the tiniest seed. Yet Raptor Jesus was fully just a joke, there was nothing serious or mystical about it, reminder. I was there. Remember that Ted guy with the right wing talk show? CCA prior to 2010, whom 4chan ruined for the lulz. Remember Anonymous vs Scientology? Remember that fake bomb threat aka exploding yellow van? Compare that with what Anon did through slash Paul slash T and the terrorist accusations thrown at Anon today, as well as the reasons why 8CHAN was taken down. Why does this too feel as if we were all trained, groomed, led towards where we are now? Why and how did Mood so utterly vanish into Google Inc? As an employee with very vague descriptions of what he actually does? On that note, do you remember the other Mood who was often posted for the lulz? The one with the glasses who so often ran away with donations into Mexico? I do. Maybe that was the real moot, the real guy who used his mom's credit card and was killed by someone, and an imposter we know as moot took his place. Innocent sexual perversion and the horrible reality it spawned. Anon is a pervert and always was one. I am into Ioli and feed for instance. Why is it that real life and the real world seem to emulate our sexual interests, with the time lag? L wish to be the little succubus became an actual thing that actually happens. Pedo activism is also gradually becoming accepted, as is virtually every fetish that was once either a joke or a fantasy of a nonce. As said I'm a food fuck. When I became aware of it few others were with me, now it's as common as can be, with gigantic number of people who are into it with huge mountains of smut and rule 34 with it etc. Why does the real world bend over backwards to accommodate our weirdest fetishes? It's as if everything is going look, look. I created this for you. I made it real, in an effort to keep us within this world. The results of this are devastating to society, to people, to civilization. Simply put, femboys are a thing because a non fap to of cute boys in dresses. Once it was an impossible fan.